Hello, hello. I bid blessing to you and yours in this most festive and globally joyous season. I'm pretty sure everybody has been the target of comments made by people whose mindsets are probably pessimistic or skeptical, even cynical. And I'd ask that you not take their comments personally and just let you know this is not an indictment against skeptics. Rather, my intent is to provide something that's going to help us manage our own perceptions as well as those concerning skepticism. We can rightfully say that a skeptic is somebody that questions or doubts accepted opinions or something that's said to be factual. We've all been skeptical at some point, and I'm sure that's especially true in my case. As a matter of fact, I was rather skeptical of passive when I first joined. If the truth be known, I joined so I could get more information, more evidence, because I was skeptical. As skeptics, we tend to think our belief is going to be uh, proportional to the evidence. You know, the more evidence we have to support it, the stronger our beliefs and opinions. So, what is a belief? Well, a belief is just a thought that we've had a whole lot of times, and it doesn't mean that it's got to be good or true or whatever. They're just thoughts. So, the beliefs that come from those thoughts don't have to be good, true, or whatever either. Because, even as our own thoughts were born out of a prior belief, the new belief becomes evidence to ourselves of what we believe to be true. So... About 95% of our attitudes have us looking for evidence that's in line with what we believe rather than believing what the evidence indicates may be true. Skepticism's no different in that it tries to validate itself. So, we could all say our opinion is based on evidence or even the lack of evidence, but it doesn't matter either way because skepticism is based in belief, not evidence or the lack of it. And as our belief becomes stronger, they become truth for us. So, that's fine. But we don't want to get caught in the trap that what we believe is rigid, carved in stone, unbreakable law. It's not. The belief that we hold comes from ideas, the thoughts we once had. So then we have that thought again. And we continue to have that thought until it's ingrained in us so completely that we call it a belief and it becomes hardwired in a way. In fact, there's a principle in the field of neuroscience that explains it pretty good, and it stipulates that when we have a thought many, many times, it becomes our belief because the neurons in our brains fired together so often, they became a network that now fires all at once. It's kind of like a speed type. Instead of thinking of a word or uh, something consisting of individual letters that each constitute a single typing action, the typist thinks of a word as a single action, so typing it becomes very fast. In the same way, the network of neurons that represent a belief fires as a single action instead of several actions that represent each component of that belief. When these circuits are built, we call it learning. But once built, the more we fire that circuit through a process we call remembering, the stronger it gets so that it eventually becomes what we call a belief. And just like circuits can be built, they can be unbuilt, so to speak, or pruned. By that, we just mean that by changing or adding information, beliefs can be changed or made to disappear altogether. That's called changing our mind or forgetting. And how do we forget? Well, by introducing new ideas or by not putting attention on unwanted thoughts and beliefs, by not putting focus or putting our energy into them. As we prune a connection, so to speak, the energy used to hold it together dissipates and synapses for the new circuits are built. Interestingly, we can still retain the individual ideas, but they no longer constitute a belief and they no longer fire together as one. So, while this is true for all our beliefs, as we look skeptically at on passive, it's very likely we're expressing beliefs developed as a result of being scammed, cheated, taken advantage of, or otherwise hurt by broken promises. I know that was my case. I've been cheated several times through online marketing endeavors, and it's only natural to be skeptical after that. When I first heard about the promises of OnPassive, I went full-on skeptic, man, and I'll tell you who could blame me, right? I'd never seen a company promising a fresh, new, complete, automated, done-for-you system that saves time and generates residual income under one roof with the lowest cost on the planet, much less one that actually had it. I mean, hey, that is a whole lot of promise. It's unheard of. And it not only goes against the entire online model, but everything else that we've been taught about business. So I can appreciate a skeptic because I are one. <laughs> Just not without passive anymore. Through pruning our beliefs, we can gradually allow different, less skeptical perspectives until we reach a point where skepticism is replaced by hope, then expectation, then anticipation. That's exactly what happened to me, and that's what happens in all cases where skeptics become believers. That's because skeptical opinion is based in our conscious mind. 
our analytical brain, which we access every day. This means we have access to those thoughts and can change them by changing the information they're based on. And if we understand for ourselves that our skeptical behavior is information based and that it's readily changeable, then we have to agree that we can change our mindset to become healthier and happier with much greater success. Cynicism is a little bit different, so it can represent a greater challenge, kind of like, you know. Um, a cynic is somebody that believes that people are motivated purely by self-interest rather than by acting for honorable or unselfish reasons. As such, cynicism is based in the subconscious and can usually be correlated with an emotional set. That makes changing a cynical opinion a lot harder because generally speaking, it doesn't just go against the surface beliefs a person has. It focuses on underlying beliefs that are core memories of personality. As an example, if we're cynical towards on passive, it's likely because we simply don't believe that anybody would create a business at great personal cost that provides value to its members through a vision of lifting the human condition. <laughs> As a cynic, we probably can't believe somebody's going to spend millions of dollars to help the little guy or fathom a corporation that's motivated purely enough to willingly and unselfishly use its own resources to provide greater good for the globe. Anyway, since changing our mind and creating beliefs is a personal journey, changing a belief isn't something that we can do for anybody else. Although it is a, uh, quote, you can lead a horse to water, unquote, kind of a thing. So how is it that we actually get past skepticism? Well, we do it by laying out facts, by laying out what we know and even things that we are skeptical about, while adding or changing information factually and weaving the positive things we believe right into the mix. In short, we begin with what we know and we build a base. So let's do that here. I did a search for on passive reviews. Most of what I came up with was linked to on passive through personal blogs, etc. Uh, even so, I found a lot of things that were largely inaccurate, poorly written, and outdated. Much to my surprise, there were seldom names and specific dates on these sites. Some of them were written under the guise of a review when they were actually a marketing piece to join GoFounders. Others were actual reviews, partially true, usually outdated, and lumped in among advertisements for other MLM opportunities with other links for reviews of those as well. As a result, I decided to go after third party on passive reviews posted as actual company reviews written by those purported to be actual employees. The first page of results from an on passive company review cert had the Better Business Bureau listed near the middle. I took time with it here because for any number of reasons, people seem to think that the BBB has authority to do something about scam artists and such, but they don't. Nevertheless, I've posted it here uh, and I've listed what they say about on passive as well as some other information about the BBB that you may not know. The BBB lists on passive as a multi-level sales business. Uh, it gives a Florida address and phone number, lists the uh, domain name of onpassive.com, showed a customer review score of a uh, five out of five, and showed resolving four customers' complaints in the last three years and three of those in the last 12 months. Scrolling down, it listed business details that included years in business as two, an alternate business name of GoFounders, the gofounders.net address, and it listed Mr. Ash Mifara as its CEO. When I clicked the reasons for BBB rating icon, it gave me this page and it indicated that on passive does not have a rating with them at this time. So that you know, the BBB ran into some pretty serious problems back in 2010 uh, that started with the ABC 2020 investigation. Following a lawsuit in 2012 by a SoCal law firm, the BBB branch was shut down there. And in 2015, CNN and Money did a report on them as well. Uh, the links to everything mentioned here is on the slide and there are active links in the description box. So um, there were more results listed on the first page of the search and uh, some of those were purportedly written by actual employees and posted on the uh, online businesses. Uh, I've listed those here as well, and we are gonna go through those. Uh, the first one, which was uh, from the indeed.com site, there were 20 reviews dating from October, 2019 through October of 2020. The ratings average was 4.5 out of five. The next one was with glassdoor.com. Um, there were 77 reviews dating from November of 19 to uh, 2020, December this month, and the ratings average was between 4.3 and 5. Um, the last one there, the sitejabber.com, there were 46 reviews dating from October of last year through December of this year. 
with average ratings of 4.5 of 5. I've listed the remaining review sites uh, from the first page here. Um, these reviews were not used since they were done by individuals, which were employees. And anybody wanting these sites should be able to do a search for, quote, on passive company review, unquote, just like I did, and get the exact listing I got. I used the Google search engine. I was a little surprised that some of uh, the stuff that I'd previously seen on the net didn't show up. And in particular, there was a couple of videos that showed up a year and a half ago that didn't show up again. Uh, I mentioned these simply because while not actually reviews, they were based on actual on passive events. One of those was about a subject line of an email sent by our CEO, Mr. Mufara. The other had to do with the on passive IT hub, which was uh, in Bangalore at the time. And I provide my thoughts about the two of those here simply because a lot of people have brought those up. I mean, they've mentioned them to me, you know, not only verbally, but They've sent me the links and asked about them in emails. So the first one was a YouTube video that talked about Mr. Mufar calling for, for an unplanned webinar uh, through an email with the words, I quit in the subject line of April of last year. During the first part of that webinar, he explained that he was going to quit giving deadlines. That's what he was talking about when he said, I quit. He was going to quit giving any dates or timelines for projects and uh, stuff like that simply because it was a very... Uh, fluid process that we were going through. That announcement actually marked a strategy change that catapulted the Go Founders momentum. Now, I can tell you from personal experience, after the recording of that webinar stopped, which we do on occasion, or actually quite often, we continued to talk for more than an hour, and that ended up being one of the most inspiring webinars that I have ever attended. The other video was a pathetic attempt at painting our office in Bangalore as a fake, complete with rented staff, etc., 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 it would be pointless at this point to try to prove that office existed, but I can certainly fill in the missing pieces. Our first office was a rented space in Calcutta. Then we moved that office to Bangalore. Again, it was rented. However, a few months later, we moved again to High Tech City. So let's get that out there, okay? We hold a lease from DSR Inspire, whose name's on the front of the building, right? For the entire building. And if you search that, DSR Inspire and Hyderabad, you get the address listed here that I put on the slide. Um, it's a properties address that you can look at. This is on Passive's IT Hub and it's located in High Tech City, Hyderabad. It's uh, Telangana, India. It's a seven-story building that we occupy under a nine-year lease. There's a basement, a ground floor, five working floors, and a top floor. It's called a terrace, and this has a cafeteria in it. Now, none of that should matter, I guess. But what's interesting is if you Google the name, DSR Inspire, you know, the name on the building, you're going to get a page that talks about the building. And after opening the page up and scrolling down, it's going to give you information about the building, and it lists specifically on passive as being the occupant of every floor in the building. And I'm also listing this site as a, uh, a recent view of the building from a passing train, just so that you can, I, I, I thought it was interesting, that's all. So anyway, we set a baseline of belief here from the huge amount of data that you can get online. And even though I think some of what we find online is questionable, there is a great deal more good, so it really can't be ignored. We've looked at all eight unique results on the first page of my search. And that search was, again, quote, unpassive company review, unquote, using the Google search engine. Three of those results gave us close to 150 reviews on third-party sites with an average rating of about four and a half out of five. We stayed away from the non-third-party sites as well as those by the GoFounders authors simply because of obvious bias. And we also looked at the BB site or the Better Business Bureau site, which was also returned in the results. Sites that showed up on the search that we did not pursue are also listed for you. And we addressed two particularly shameful videos, in my opinion, and also saw some compelling evidence that our office in High Tech City is as we purport it to be. So as good as all that is, the information available to founders through the GoFounders platform is a lot more complete. We've got an in-depth content textual information and had some of our products explained by Mr. Mufara doing these webinars. Of course, not all of these products are ready and not all of them have been shared. The majority of these that have been listed um, have been nicely explained at one point or another during private webinars, but some others have not. And I'm not going to go through them here, but the short descriptions are provided for a bunch of them in previous videos, uh, one of which is called the MLMers Paradise. So, let's address the elephant in the room, so to speak, and let's talk about why we haven't launched 
I mean, all year long, we've been saying we're launching this year, right? Well, I'm certainly not going to, to use Mr. Mafar's words, insult your intelligence by telling you that I expect that to happen, even though I'd be tickled pink to have a New Year's Eve soft launch. So why haven't we launched? Well, simply because On Passive has been a massive undertaking and the incredible momentum that we've experienced since December of 2018 has continued, amplified, and morphed. To explain this, let me give you a short history to add some information to what you already know. On Passive started a couple years ago with a budget of about 100k and a launch window that was about 90 days. Now, by the time we were supposed to launch, somewhere between February and April of last year, we had already surpassed the expectation concerning founder growth. The Calcutta team's first challenge was to revamp GoFounders as a marketing platform. Since then, at every step, month after month, we've grown. Migrating from a strict marketing platform, we got our own developers and started creating our own products. In months, they became a product suite. Then they got so smart, they became a smart business solution. On Passive became a global solutions provider, creating everything in-house. We then hired more developers and introduced AI to what had become an entire digital ecosystem. And these aren't just products, they're full-blown portfolio. We changed from a marketing platform with a few products to a smart and completely automated digital ecosystem with 50 departments. That didn't happen overnight. It happened in phases three, four, five phases over the last 18 months. We added more money and better tech. We moved from Calcutta to Bangalore to high tech city, and we add a lot more staff. And that stuff takes time. And we have grown in staff, in budgeting, in technical prowess, and we plan the future in waves too. And each wave has pushed that launch out just a little bit more. Most recently in our growth, we began to exercise what we call regulatory excellence. And I don't believe that anything like that's ever been done in the history of business before. Before that endeavor began, we were ready to push the button. This is to say that there was nothing stopping us from launching, but we had to accept the challenge of reaching a heretofore unheard of regulatory standard because we are creating the on-passive class of excellence. This is the last step. It's happening. We are closer now than we've ever been, and by New Year's Eve 2020, we will have surpassed the 400,000 founder mark. These are already committed to monthly subscriptions for the products being offered. You've been invited to share in this glory. On Passive is the new online model, and our lives are about to get a whole lot better. As a founder with On Passive, you've got the chance to do a lot more than you ever thought you would be able to, a lot easier and a lot faster than you ever thought possible. But not everybody's cut out to be a founder. And that's okay. If that's you, that's all right. We can't all be in it to win it as founders. But you can join after the launch. It won't be the same, but you'll still be successful. So I am saying that if you are an existing founder, good on you, right? But if you're not and an existing founder invited you, get back with that founder, sign up in their team. If that's not the case, I would certainly love to have you on our team. So please click the link in the description box below and join right now. Whatever you decide, we only wish blessing and blessing upon you and your family.